Hello everybody and welcome back to Unit 4, Section 3. We're going to do two sections today, 3 and 4, Soil and Soil Conservation. They kind of go hand in hand. We're trying to get through Unit 4 really quick before the nine weeks ends, so let's, um, let's jump to it, shall we? Today's objective is students will be able to describe and diagram layers of a soil profile and determine how soil is formed. So how is soil formed? It's a good question to start with. So rock layers related to soil, we have regolith, and regolith is a layer of weathered rock that covers most of the Earth's surface. Now I couldn't find a very good picture of regolith here on the planet, not at a quick search. So here's one of Deimos, which is a moon of Mars, and it's covered by a layer of regolith estimated to be 50 meters um, thick. So that's just kind of what it looks like. It's your generic rock, for lack of a better term. Bedrock is solid unweathered rock that lies beneath the regolith, and there's two types, solid and broken, but I don't think you really need to know that. Uh, but you should know bedrock. Bedrock is called that because it is the foundational rock. It's the bed. It's, it's what everything else lays on, if you would. Now understand soil is a system, and no, this part's not exactly in your notes, but soil is made up of many different parts, and we're going to talk more about the inorganic parts of it today, but a lot of it does come from organisms that work with the soil. So the plant matter, the leaves, the, all that stuff tends to decay and break down, and then a lot of different organisms you know, live in the soil. They live in the soil, and they work with the soil, and they create pockets, and they they break down nutrients, and they do lots of different things. Soil is made up of a mixture of weathered rock particles and an organic material called humus. Now, it looks a lot like hummus, but that's the chickpea spread stuff that people like. This is humus. And humus is this dark background that I have here. It's that black part of the soil. It's, it's organic matter. It comes from living things. So humus is plant or plant animal matter material and it's usually colored dark because organic matter typically comes from mostly plants but it could be from other things too. Um, soil is mostly going to be sand, clay, or silt and the soil texture is determined by the size of the particles. Clay is the smallest. I usually think of clay being the largest but it's actually the smallest. I, I get this mixed up in my head and um, it's weathered from rocks containing feldspar or aluminum. Silt is medium, and it's often found around you know, riverbeds and ri um, things like that. And then sand is the largest. Sand is the largest particle size. So to um, kind of put things in perspective here, we have gravel, which is you know much bigger, and I think we all have an idea of what gravel is. But then you have sand, and then you have silt, and then you have clay, which is way too small to see. Okay. You can also think of it from this perspective. Now, if you look at put all these together, you end up with what's called a soil um, triangle. And the soil triangle is a little tricky to read. The one I'm using in the notes today, not this one, but in a minute, is um, I'm, I, I had to go over it a few times because it's very difficult. But basically, for percent clay, you find like if it's 10%, you, you follow this line. If it's 20%, you follow this line. Maybe I should use my laser pointer here. You know, 40 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then for silt, you go down in an angle. So silt, this is 10, going this way. This is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then for um, sand, sand's down here, we go up at an angle. So this is 90, this is 80, this is 70, this is 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. All right, so let's do a couple of problems you have in the notes. What is the name of a soil? Let me turn that laser pointer off if I can. I don't think it's going to let me do it from that. Um, what is the name of soil that is 30% clay? So 30% clay, so we're going to go over here on the... Actually, I should probably turn the laser pointer back on. So 30% is right here, and so we're going to follow this line. Where let's, put a, let's put a line right there, okay? It's 50% silt. Now, this one's really confusing on this graph. It's, I think, I'm pretty sure this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But to get the proper answer, I think this is actually the 50 mark. Something's wrong with this, this triangle. There's something wrong with it. I'm just saying. Like, I think the lines are off. I think I should have, I should have just used a whole totally different thing. But whatever. Um, and then 20, and by the way, your copies did not copy very well for this. So feel free to put these lines in your notes a little bit better. And then sand is um, down here. So we're going to go, um, 
maybe this is 190, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. 30. See, where's the 10 mark? There should be like a 10 line right here. So 20% would be there. And when you do all that, you're going to see it's silty clay loam. That silty clay loam is what we were looking for as the answer. Um, the next one's a little bit easier. 20% clay. So 20% is right here. That's a straight line across there. 40% silt. So we're going to go over here. And again, I think it's the line underneath it. It's something, something's not right there. I, it's just not. And then if we go 40% sand, we have that there. And that's what we see. And we see the one point where they all cross because they should all add up to 100, right? They should all add up to 100. That's just good old fashioned loam. That's good old fashioned loam. I really need to change that graphic. That, that soil triangle is really messed up. Uh, so soil profile it has cross section in which layers of soil and bedrock can be seen. And so a lot of times you see it looks something like this over there on the right. And so the, on the top we have the O horizon, which is short for organic. And then we have the A horizon, which is the top soil. It's rich in humus and leached soil. Now leached in this case means that minerals have been taken from it. B horizon is a reddish brown soil. And C horizon is the deepest layer, consists of broken and solid, unweathered bedrock. Now, climate determines a lot of different soils. So humid tropical climates are going to have a very thick O horizon, and that's called laterite. Laterite is actually found beneath rainforests, and believe it or not, it's actually not that good for growing crops. Desert climates, and I tried to find a really good picture. Here's Mojave Desert, so you can see the, the, the surface here. It, it, there's not a lot of stuff there. It's mostly just regolith. Um, also, as far as temperate climates go, like where we live, there's petal fir, which is you know the pretty much eastern United States, areas east of the Mississippi. They receive more than 65 centimeters of rain, mostly clay, quartz, and iron, and soil tends to be a little bit on the acid side. And then on the um, west of the Mississippi, you have the pedicals. And cal, because of calcium, if you remember that, it contains calcium. It's a little bit less acidic, very fertile. This is where you find a lot of the breadbasket of America, it's in general in the Midwest, if you did not know that. This shows you the dominant soils that you see in different places. You really can't read that chart, can you? Y'all probably can't read it, and I can't read it, and I'm actually looking at a better copy of it. Um, mountain soil is typically very poor quality because rainwater constantly washes it away. But in North Carolina, because this is a North Carolina course, you should know that our soil type, for the most part, not totally, but for the most part, our soil is what's called cecil. And cecil is found above granitic rock. It has a very thick red subsoil. And those of y'all that are here at Granville Central with me, and that's most of y'all taking this as I record it, you know we have a lot of red soil around here. We just do. We have a lot of red clay. Okay, that's 4.03. Let's move on to 4.04, .04, soil conservation and traditional sustainable agriculture. And this, I want you to be able to describe methods of soil conservation in order to explain their effectiveness. So how is soil for, you know what? I think I goofed up here. I think I goofed up and did not change the question. And I apologize for that. It probably should say, how do we lose soil? Or how, what do you mean we can lose soil? Like, that's just kind of a crazy concept in general, isn't it? So anyway, uh, that's why I put the consider the following there, because I mess it up. So this is like an example of erosion, kind of, sort of. You can see it's, you know, it's, it's obviously on repeat, but soil erosion is a big problem due to climate, due to slope steepness, and types of vegetation. As I record this, Hurricane Helene came through just a week ago devastated the mountains of North Carolina. You may have seen even like Interstate 40 has actually caved in, um, has crashed in. And as they say, it's going to be a while before that gets re repaired and refixed. And this is because of erosion. This is because of landslides and things like that. So some things we do to try to combat soil um, erosion is things like terracing. These are step-like ridges that you see over here. Um, so they, you know, they're they flat, very Minecraft looking you know, you know, obviously not in squares, but you see it's like a flat surface and then it goes down. So it, you, you do this in order to keep the soil. You don't want it on a slope because otherwise the soil is just going to go down. So you, you give it a flat surface. Contour plowing is you go with the contours of the um, area that you're plowing. So this is like a hill. And rather than to plow up and down the hill, you plow with the hill so that, again, it slows down water erosion. 
Strip cropping is when you put crops in rows so that they help do windbreaks and things like that for each other. So it helps prevent soil being eroded. So like hay and corn, oats, and you kind of repeat that pattern or whatever it is that we're looking for. There's lots of different ways you can do soil crop um, strip cropping. Shelter belts are when you see like a big field, they'll have like a line of trees around it. And it's not just there for the sake of kind of saying, hey, this is that field versus that field. It's because this is, does what's called a wind break. It prevents the wind from going through and actually picking up the soil and moving the soil away. So these are two different, down here on the bottom, these are two different types of shelter belts that we can plant as well. Traditional versus sustainable agriculture. Traditional agriculture is going to be tactics like slash and burn. You go in, you burn the soil. In theory, that produces some nutrients, puts it back down into the ground. You are using this to turn forest into farmland, things like that. Clear cutting is where they go in and they uniformly cut down all the trees. You can see um, an example of clear cutting in the second picture here. Um, obviously very stark against the forest. That's clear cutting. Tilling is turning up the soil. Believe it or not, um, there are a lot of people who do no-till agriculture now because it's believed that it helps keep the soil in place and prevents erosion. I may be giving y'all a video to watch about that. Maybe not on the day that you do these notes, but um, I actually there's a video I do in my AP environmental class that's really good about this. Monoculture, mono means one, so grows a single crop. And if you grow a single crop and um, plants get sick too, you get a disease, you're going to have a pandemic within that crop. So monocropping has a lot of problems. Also, monoculture does. Also, monoculturing has an issue like if you have a particular pest that eats like, say, tomato plants, and you have nothing but tomato plants, you have created heaven for that pest, whatever that thing may be. Fertilizers cause, you know, we often add fertilizers to try to add nutrients, but that can also cause other, lots of other issues we won't even get into, as well as pesticides, which were made to kill pests, herbicides, which are made to kill plants, insecticides, which are made to kill insects. Yes, insecticides and herbicides are both types of pesticides. There's also other types of um, things like rodenticides that are made to kill um, rodents, and there's another one or two... There's several different types of sides, and a side, of course, means to kill. Sustainable agriculture techniques, though, things that we want to kind of push towards is crop rotation. You plant a crop here, then you plant a new crop next time, then you plant another crop another time. Why? To help keep the soil and nutrients, and also to keep the soil, plant roots actually help hold the soil in place and help prevent erosion. Cover crops are done to prevent soil erosion. They suppress weeds. So a lot of um, farmers will do this over the winter. Like they may plant a crop that they're not actually planning on harvesting for a, a profit, but it's there to keep the soil in place. And it also helps keep weeds from out competing. And, and this weeds are going to use up the nutrients, which we don't want as well. We can do soil enrichment, add a layer of manure. We can mulch the soil. We can add compost. We can add things to the soil, not just fertilizers, which are you know, pretty much like pure nutrients. We can do things that are better. And then integrated pest management. So if you've got a big problem with, say, aphids, ladybugs are amazing. In fact, I think it's illegal in North Carolina to kill ladybugs because they eat aphids. And so um, they're used for that. So a few sustainable techniques. Uh, magnitude is the size, extent, or importance of a technique. Duration is the length of time the technique continues. And frequency is the number of occurrences of a technique. Um, and so agroecology versus industrial agroecology. And then just a few pictures to kind of round out things. This is an example of... Did you say terracing? What about this one? What is this an example of? That would be contour farming. Um, this would also be contour farming. This might be... Is this strip cropping? This might be strip cropping. But it's also contour farming too. Uh, this is also contour farming. This is also strip cropping. This has also got some shelter belts as well. And this, of course, is an example of um, monoculture, but maybe some strip cropping because over here on the right, this looks like a slightly different or um, plant being allowed to grow, but this is definitely a type of monoculture. So anyway, there we are. I hope you learned a little something, and I will see y'all next week. We got about a week left, y'all. Uh, next, one more video, and we're going to combine three sections into one. 
So maybe one more video, maybe three more videos. Would you rather have three videos? Are y'all even watching these? My view count's going down. I don't think y'all are watching these. I got something planned. I've got a... LaFou, I'm afraid I've been thinking. 